Okay, we have uh, discussed five or six different types of depression. We've also talked about different treatments for depression. We've even talked about um, non-clinical depression. One of the things that I wanted to add that's really very important to me is that is the, the role that spirituality can play in our mental health. Of course, it helps also with your physical health, but since I'm a psychologist and, and I'm really um, primarily interested in um, mental, emotional health right now, you know, I want to focus on that. So spirituality can play a big role on your emotional well-being. You know, in an article that I found uh, entitled uh, "Raising Kids with Religion." or spirituality may protect their mental health. It's a study by, that was written up by Alice uh, Walton, September 17th, 2018. So that's something that you can look up if you uh, uh, want more information about it. But let me tell you a little bit about what the study is, is what, what she found in her study. Um, a new study from Harvard's T.H. Chan School of Public Health finds that kids and teens who are raised with religious or spiritual practices tend to have much better health and mental health as they age. But not to worry if you're not a service attendant. The research published last week in the American Journal of Epidemiology finds that people who prayed or meditated on their own time also reap similar benefits, including lower risk of substance abuse and depression later on. The team looked at data from 5,000 people taking part in a long-term nurses' health study. And its next generation, the next study that they added to that was Growing Up uh, Today study. They were interested in whether the frequency with which a child or a teenager attended religious services with their parents or prayed or meditated on their own was correlated with their health and mental health as they grew into their 20s. The young people were followed for anywhere from 8 to 14 years. As it turned out, that those who attended religious services at least once a week as children or teens were about 18% more likely to report being happier than the, in their 20s than those who never attended services. They were also almost 30% more likely to do volunteer work and 33% less likely to use drugs in their 20s as well. But what was interesting about it wasn't just about how much a person went to service, but it was at least as much about how much they prayed or meditated on their own time. Those who prayed or meditated every day also had more life satisfaction, were better able to process emotions, and were more forgiving compared to those who never prayed or meditated. They were also less likely to have sex at an earlier age and to have sexually transmitted infections. These findings are important for both our understanding of parenting practices, said author Ying Chen. Many children are raised religiously, and our study shows that this can powerfully affect their health, behavior, mental health, and overall happiness and well-being. Previous studies have suggested that similar connections, for instance, that people who were more religious are often happier, that people who believe in something greater than themselves are more resilient to stress. Other work has shown that meditation and prayer tend to deactivate the me centers of the brain that are active when you're thinking about yourself and worry-based thoughts will quiet down in areas involved in the perceiving the external world as other, also deactivate. Now, what does this say? This might suggest that at least one way in which religion and spirituality benefits mental health is to reduce our tendency to think about ourselves and at the same time dissolve our sense of separateness from other people and from the world. 
And as many people know, there is also a huge body of research showing what meditation itself does for the brain and for the mental health, from reducing symptoms of depression to increasing attention and creativity. Additionally, other research has shown that experiencing awe, spending time in nature, and spending time in silence are all linked to greater happiness and well-being. One drawback of the new study was that although it tried to control for socioeconomic status and other confounding variables, most people in the study were white, female, and of higher socioeconomic study. This, this study would need to be uh, replicated in a more diverse population to see whether the phenomena holds for other demographics too. In the meantime, the research definitely hints that we might want to take a little time to meditate or pray, whatever that might look like for you, even if you're not religious in the classic sense, just observing something bigger than yourself, like nature or the night sky, might tap into the same mechanism. Like many other studies, this new one also suggests that some of the fundamental habits that humans have been doing for eons, like praying and meditating, might actually have more value than we tend to think. So, pray, meditate. Think of things that are larger than yourself. It's not all about you. We will go into other um, uh, spirituality aspects because I did write a book called Psychology from Scripture, and I want to share some of my um, um, writings with you of how I think spirituality impacts mental health. Okay? That'll be for the next time we meet. Thank you very much. Take care and be blessed.